Hi there, I'm Julia Leaf. I'm the pastor of Covenant Community Church in Vacaville, California. And this is my friend Brad Ludwig, who is our director of worship. We're so glad that you're able to make a margin with us with the Lord, and we hope that God will bless you so richly. I pray that you are doing fantastic, no matter where you are or what you're doing right now. And I know that we're all getting antsy as phase three out of 4,000 is coming our way, but we are excited to worship with you tonight and that this series, uh, even though we're getting ready to open up our doors on June 14th, uh, this series will continue and we've had a tremendous time doing it. Um, and it, uh, as soon as we can start to see uh, more people, it'll become something even better. So no matter where you are, if you're at home or at work, if you're in a room full of people or you're all by yourself, God's with us no matter what. So would you please sing with us? <laughs> We sing hallelujah, we sing 
you're in right now. He's with us. And he is alive in us. So I want you to take a minute right now and just prepare yourself. And we just want to lift our voices to him. Church is not only for Mondays and Sundays and Wednesdays. It's every day, no matter where you are. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb has overcome, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb has So God is here in this place, and we have uh, these opportunities as we kind of slow down our schedule, as we make a margin, as we enter into the presence of the Lord, knowing that God is already here waiting for us uh, to enter his presence. Uh, We've been reading through the Chronological Bible. I hope you're reading along with us, and if you're not, I hope you're reading uh, God's Word as you would. Uh, Sunday mornings we're looking at Matthew, and we've been spending a lot of time in Matthew. We're early in it, uh, just in chapter 5, moving towards five or towards 6. And uh, this week we're going to look at Proverbs. Proverbs such a great little bits of wisdom from Solomon, where he's, he's trying to give little nuggets of truth that would help people be successful, would help people have the life that they want. And uh, some of those uh, kind of wisdom, you know, little bits of wisdom and encouragement are so relevant for where we're finding ourselves. And, and sometimes we, we, we forget they're there, so it's a, a good reminder for us to look at it. So uh, this week we looked at Proverbs 1, 2, and 3, and uh, Proverbs 3 is such a great reminder. So I invite you, dear ones, to turn your Bible to Proverbs 3, and we're going to read the first six verses. My son and daughter... Do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For the length of of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not the steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. Such a good reminder for us. And there's so many uh, little bits of nuggets in that, which I I was thinking about this uh, week as I was looking at this text. And just this reminder for us to not forget the teachings. Uh, For them, uh, for Solomon, he was talking to people who understood the teachings of the law, the teaching of the Ten Commandments, the teaching of, of God's law as he set um, the covenant with them, a, a covenant of law. And the Torah was given so that people would kind of know how to operate not only with God but within the world. And, and for us, for followers of Christ, and I don't presume to know that you, that you are a follower of Christ, but for Christians, uh, we have this, uh, this expectation to follow God because of of who he has called us to be and who he has made us to be. But these uh, teachings are really just these 
these instructions or parameters or boundaries, whatever you want to say, these little guidelines that might help us to be in right relationship with God and with each other. And so for us, the, the Christians, for us who are followers of Christ, we think about the teachings. And man, you know, because you've heard uh, preachers uh, likely preach uh, so many different sermons. And as we talk about our favorite verses or what's the most important thing that the Bible says, or how do we know what those teachings are? And, and really, the teachings are summarized in Matthew, right? To love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. That's in Matthew 22. We're going to be looking at Matthew 22 in several weeks, but but it is just this reminder of loving God with the totality of everything that we are, everything that we hope to become, all the ways that God has created us. He wants us to love, love him with our heart, with our soul, with our mind, with the passions, with the thing that makes us uniquely us, and and to make that decision and to, to think it through and to put those thoughts and feelings into action, which translated into a transformed life. So it's, and then the text continues, don't forget them, but keep them on your heart. This passion and drive, the things that, that really make your life a life, the things that make your life a life, the things that make my life a life. It says don't forget them, to, but to keep them in your heart and then he continues he says they will prolong your life and bring you peace and prosperity i don't know about you but the funny thing is is i signed up for that life i signed up for the Me one too. where you do all the right yes. things yes you do all the right things you check the box yes i'm a follower of christ mm -hmm. yeah i did the right thing i was nice to the people around me mm -hmm. yeah and then i'm gonna get peace and prosperity i'm with the white picket fence mm -hmm. i want the great life where i always have enough to do the things that i want to do and I want to have a life of harmony. Like, and if we could bottle that, we would sell that in droves, right? And that is the Christianity. That's the faith that I signed up for on some level. And perhaps you did too. Uh, but here's Solomon saying, if you do these things, if you love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your mind, and your soul, if you follow, if for Solomon, he's saying, if you follow the law, which is the precursor to the, the covenant of grace, he says, if you do all these things, then you will have peace and prosperity. And I say amen to that. The challenge is uh, we don't always see that in our lives, right? The peace is not just a, a life of harmony. It's not just a life without drama. And man, there's been, there's been so much, uh, not the right word is, but there's been a lack of peace in our world. There's been, a, there's been just pain and hardship and loss and death and, and hatred and all kinds of things that are going on that you're like, what the heck is going on? And I talked a little bit about that on Tuesday, but but I see this text and I go, man, I want to have that. How do I have this life of peace and prosperity? But but for him, and and really for Christians, peace doesn't talk about having none of those things that are heartbreaking. What peace talks about is this this wholeness, the shalom, the wholeness of God. And it's really this bringing together all the pieces of our life into one piece that we bring into the presence of the Lord. And then God will do what he'll do. And, and for me, I find this, this strange comfort that when I look at things and I go, I don't, I don't understand a thing that's going on in our world right now. But, but I want to have this life of peace where God is always bringing things back together. And, and then he says, and he'll bring this, this life of prosperity and the life of prosperity is is not having like the white picket fence or even having a certain amount of money in, in your bank account sorry <laughs> he works for the I church too works for the church but but that but that it's this reminder of the prosperity is living a good life in community living a good life in with regards to relationship with the lord and so he says, if you do these things, you will have uh, God's blessing. You will have God's work in your life. And I think, I want that. Like maybe I signed up for one kind of life of faith where it had kind of like a bottom line number and a particular lifestyle. But what I really want is what God wants me to have, which is my life being transformed and, and God giving me a life that, that is the life I want to live, a life that makes a difference. And then he continues in the text, he says, let love and faithfulness never leave you. And the love is for your God and the love is for your community. It's this, 
powerful reminder that that those things love and faithfulness need to be with you and the love is is this this love that is a agape kind of love it's the true kind of love the the long-standing long-suffering patient enduring kind of love and this faithfulness is the promises that you have made with God and the promises that God has made to you and to us and so there's this reminder for us that 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 Solomon is encouraging all of the people this is what you need to do to make sure you have the life that you want to have let love and faithfulness love never leave you and then he he like he writes these these two phrases he says bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart uh, bind them around your neck it's this decision right you you don't just you don't just get bound you don't just bound something like oopsie daisy uh, i bound that oopsie daisy i bound these love and faithfulness it is a decision and, and it it is a securing it's a bringing together of the pieces to be one thing because so, when something is bound it becomes one unit right and so this image of making the decision to to not only let the pieces of your life be brought together and, and to 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 be fully transformed, but then but then also to let God to bring the pieces in your life together. And so I think that's such a cool image. So bind them around your neck and write them on the the tablet of your heart. Now remember, these are the people who who had the the story of. Of Moses coming down with the tablets that that God had given him, these tablets that were the permanent um, kind of direction by God, and, and even though those you know first the first the tablets broke because remember, remember the people were not being faithful and Moses mm -hmm. got a little fired up and and uh, they they had a different set of of stone tablets the second time so maybe they don't have those stone tablets in front of them but they surely have what's written. On them, and so he uses uh, through God's grace this image of writing them on the tablet of the heart, and this pointing back. Remember to the image that is earlier, and, and there's this interesting image. Is that word is not even just binding them around your neck, like making this decision, but that binding is actually talking about wearing as a necklace. That you have to make an intentional um, decision to adorn yourself to let yourself be adorned with this. And that, that image, right, that it changes you. It, you know, I always say never underestimate the power of a good accessory, right? I say that, on, you know, somewhat regularly. But here's the challenge, right, that this image of love and faithfulness coming, and it not only, that you make that decision to be adorned or you make that decision to put that on and you keep it close with you, but that it totally changes and transforms the, the perspective. It changes the look, it changes everything. And so here's this reminder that we make this decision or we let God, we make the decision to do it ourselves as much as we can or we make the decision to let God do this and it changes the way we see everything. And even more than that, it changes the way people see us. And, and that for me just is resonating with me. What are the things that I'm doing that are, that are giving a testimony of what God has done in my life? What, am I, what are things that I'm doing that are pointing people to who God is and who God has adorned me to be? And I want love and faithfulness to be those adornments. And then it says, written on the heart, uh, which is really the loyalty. That phrase actually means the loyalty to one's covenant. So the Jews had the covenant with God where God gives them the, the Ten Commandments written on a tablet. And he says, this is what I need you to do, and this is how I want you to interact with me, and then I, I promise to bless you. And Christians have this covenant of grace because of the work that Jesus has done for you and for me. And so it's this, this image of pointing back to God's faithfulness in, in the, the working out of that covenant and our faithfulness and our striving for faithfulness to be intentional to have that covenant, this, this kind of rule of life, this boundaries of how God said, this is, this is how you can have the life that you want to have. And he says, you'll have favor and good name in the sight of God and in others. And then the most familiar part of the text, he says, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. It doesn't say trust in the Lord when it's convenient. It doesn't say trust in the Lord when it's safe. It doesn't say trust in the Lord sometimes. It says trust in the Lord. There's this image of wholly relying on the Lord. Kind of like a both feet in kind of living out your life of faith. 
So I wonder for you and for me and for Brad and for Andrea, are, are there areas in our lives, are there situations, maybe this week in particular, when it doesn't seem to make any sense? Is God calling to you, trust in me, trust in me even in that situation, trust in me even in that hard situation, trust in me even when that doesn't make sense? Is he using this time that you've made a margin, coming into God's presence saying, what do you want from me today, God? What can I learn from you today, God? How are you trying to work out things in my life? How are you trying to transform me, God? Maybe this is the answer. God is inviting you, trust in me. Trust in me. So he says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Now we've heard that same kind of image of the heart and, the, and uh, this kind of feeling, right? points and refers back to earlier so when you keep the commandment to love the Lord your God with all of your heart and mind and soul right and there's this reminder he says trust in the Lord with all of your heart everything that is your passion everything that's important to you your kids your job your health your church your faith your family your your livelihood that your interest uh, the, the situation, this kind of unfolding situation where you see things that don't make any sense. Trust the Lord with even that. Trust the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Because remember how when Moses came down the mountain and he saw the people who had built the calf and right after they'd been in God's, you know, kind of been so close to God and said, we'll do whatever you want. The second that they got impatient, the second that they got scared, they went and tried to control. See, we are a fickle people. We're not that original. I mean, I, th I think I'm incredibly original and creative and all of those things, unique. But I'm just like everybody else, and so are you. And I see the Jews uh, from this story, and I go, oh, my goodness, I can't believe they did that. I do that all the time in my life. Brad does it all the time in his life. I do it less than Pastor Joe. He does it much more. Andrea, much very holy person in the group of us, she's, she doesn't do it as much, but she still does it. So he says, lean not on your own understanding because he knows that we are fickle people. We are hard-hearted people. We are wandering people. He says, in all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. And so I wonder for you and for me, as we're trying to make sense of, living in this world and we want to have the kind of life of peace and prosperity this all together transformed life where we're living with with intentionality and vulnerability and hopefulness not only with relationship with one another but with god i wonder if for you and for me there might be one or two areas that we need to resubmit our lives in that we might be able to come back and say, you know what, God, I have not trusted you in this area or in this area. I've tried to control this area or this area. I haven't done what you wanted me to do. I wonder if for you and for me, there might be one or two places that we could resubmit. And here's the thing. Every day we have an opportunity, every moment we have an opportunity to come back into relationship with him. And it doesn't say that God's gonna go, Julia, you boneheaded, hard-hearted, willful, stubborn woman, which he could fully say to me. He says, come back into me. Trust me. Don't, don't do that, and I will make your path straight. See, God wants us to have the life that he wants for us, full of prosperity and peace, because he is good and generous. And so in this little moment when we can take a little pause, I hope that you will pray to him. And, and you might, in some ways, as we're making this margin, let the Holy Spirit bring those areas in your life that he might bring them back together so that we could, in fact, have God make our path straight. Would you pray with me? God, we're grateful for your mercy and for the ways that you show yourself to us. We pray that more and more you would remind us of all the ways that you're at work. And God, as we hear your word and your invitation to trust us, to trust in you, to trust every area of our lives to you, 
God, I pray that you'd help us to know what you want us to submit and to resubmit to you. So God, in this moment of silence, I pray that you would intercede, that you would speak clearly with grace and love and invitation and mercy. Lord, hear our prayers. We're so grateful, God, that you love us, that you will continue to chase after us, that you will continue to, to invite us back into relationship with you. And we pray, God, that we would trust in you with all of our heart and that we wouldn't lean on our under, understanding, but that we would submit everything to you, God, that you might make our path straight. So with hopefulness and gratitude, we pray all these things in the powerful name of Jesus and all God's people say, Amen. If you're anything like me, my greatest sin is usually, I've got this, there are people worse off than me. Or, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this yet, so I won't ask for help until um, it's too late and I did it all anyway. I can tell you a great story about 3,000 square feet of floor another time. But that is the thing that God wants. He wants every burden, every moment, every fear, everything, not some, not most. Mm -hmm. And it is a thing that I am fortunate to have people like my wife who runs the camera. That's the Andrea we're talking about in case um, you've not met her before. She's definitely the better 97.5% of this marriage, but that two and a half percent I bring is something. <laughs> and it is something that my boss and my friend, Pastor Julia Leaf, is often um, pointing out that if there's a hard way to do it, I generally find that way. And it is, it is an unfortunate gift, I think. But especially in crazy times like these, I only need one, so that it, it's okay. You know, the people down the street need three. God wants the one, too. God wants to know if you are perfectly fine. And God will know for sure if you're really not, no matter what you tell yourself in the mirror. I have a small mirror right before you walk out my front door, and it's on the opposite side of my door, so I have to intentionally look into it and go, where are you really? You can tell yourself whatever you want. You can tell the people who live in your home. You can tell anyone anything, but where are you really? And in crazy times like this, the only certainty that you have is not your job, it's not your friends, it may not even be your family. It is for sure. God being the same as he was, as he is now, and as he will always be. And that is something you just can't get anywhere else. So no matter what place you're in, whether you're home or at work, whether you're with a huge group of people you love or potentially dislike, God's got you. And then open up that heart for those people. So would you sing with us, please?
so glad you could make a margin uh, to worship with us. Uh, we're kind of making the transition back into coming to worship in person. We know that some of us will stay at home and worship online. Some of us will come back. Uh, this week we'll be online Facebook at 930. And uh, next week uh, I had put out a letter saying that we'd have one service and then we wanted to just make sure to confirm our assumptions. You may remember in the letter I said we may change it. Well, we're changing it before we even start. Uh, so starting on June the 14th, which will be our welcome back, our kickoff for the summer, uh, we'll have two services in person, and that will be at 9.30 and also at 11. And uh, here's the kind of cool, goofy thing. We're going to be like the cool, hip restaurant where you have to make a reservation. I'm like, nobody likes to make a reservation. Can we have an amen? Amen. The reality is, is we want to make sure that we're, we create a space that not only complies with what the, uh, the county wants and the governor wants, yep. but also that it's a space that feels safe for us. And so uh, we're going to split up two, the two services. So we're going to need people to RSVP so that we make sure that we stay within that parameter. And so Rebecca will be sending you an email. Uh, I'm not sure exactly the um, format. It might be Evite or Planning Center. Yeah, I think we're planning in Center. Center. Sorry about that. It's Planning Center. It'll come out from the Planning Center. And, and you'll need to RSVP every week until we kind of get back to, uh, they, they'll start to loosen up those parameters. And once we have the kind of um, set apart spots, then uh, we'll bump you to the next one. And so we, I'm really going to ask you with just the most love and graciousness, if you would be gracious and loving. Because we're gonna have kind of a set amount. We have a couple extra spaces for mm -hmm. people who are visitors who are not our regular attenders, and we wanna make sure that they can come to church if uh, they want. And then uh, we'll hope that uh, some of you might um, consider going a little bit later, and it'll be 11 to 12. And so uh, I know that may not be your normal schedule, but we're gonna, uh, we're gonna give it a go, and we're just excited to be able to be back together, and so um, we hope that you'll do that. Uh, but we just, i uh, really excited to have you worship at home online if that is more comfortable for you or to come in and, and make a joyful noise in person with us. But uh, we're just we're really excited to see what God will do. So glad to see you. And we'll see you this week at 930 and next week at 930 and 11. And, and God bless you. Have a great week. And thanks for joining us today.